Hard Days of Persecution, November 20. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. 2 Timothy 3.12 As the time comes for it, the third angel's message, to be given with greatest power, the Lord will work through humble instruments, leading the minds of those who consecrate themselves to His service. The laborers will be qualified rather by the unction of His Spirit than by the training of literary institutions. Men of faith and prayer will be constrained to go forth with holy zeal, declaring the words which God gives them. The sins of Babylon will be laid open. The fearful results of enforcing the observances of the church by civil authority, the inroads of spiritualism, the stealthy but rapid progress of the papal power, all will be unmasked. By these solemn warnings, the people will be stirred. The power attending the message will only madden those who oppose it. The church appeals to the strong arm of civil power, and in this work, papists and Protestants unite. As the movement for Sunday enforcement becomes more bold and decided, the law will be invoked against commandment keepers. The words of Paul will be literally fulfilled. All that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. As the defenders of truth refuse to honor the Sunday Sabbath, some of them will be thrust into prison, some will be exiled, some will be treated as slaves. To human wisdom, all this now seems impossible. But as the restraining spirit of God shall be withdrawn from men, and they shall be under the control of Satan, there will be strange developments. No man can serve God without enlisting himself against the opposition of the hosts of darkness. What was the strength of those who in the past have suffered persecution for Christ's sake? It was union with God, union with the Holy Spirit, union with Christ. It is this fellowship with the Savior that will enable God's people to endure to the end.